John here with RipeWave Audio and again with our 16 channel AV processor comparison. These were products that fell somewhere between $2,000 and $5,000, although one model is a little bit more than $5,000. That is the Arkham AV4100 comes in at $5,200. Then we have the mono price HTP1 at just under $4,000, 3999 and Emotiva with their RMC1. This is $3749. And of course, Emotiva has their other models, the RMC1L, which is a little less money, and the XMC2, which is even less than that, which are all quite similar. Uh, but this comparison, I think, gives you a good uh, understanding of the landscape here. These are all processors that support Dirac Live. Now you can spend less for a processor, but you're not going to get Dirac Live room calibration. So let's put these all together. Let's see how they come out. If you've been following these videos, we did two videos on the Monolith HTP1. Gave an overview in the first one, and then the second one we got into the setup and the configuration. And then we did the same with the RCAM. And we did that overview comparison against these, showed the features that it had, and then what we experienced with the setup and configuration on these models. So now the big question what everybody's been waiting to hear is, how did these sound? How did these compare against one another? And we're gonna show you also how it handled the different formats that we have everywhere from compact disc up to uh, oral 3D content. So let's uh, get into this. And finally, at the end, we're going to give our summary and our recommendation about what we think is the most well-balanced uh, processor out there in this price range. Now, when we sit down and listen and do our comparison, we try to do as apples to apples comparison as possible. So what do we use? We use all the same amplifiers. These are all AV processors, so they have to use external amplification. We're using a lot of Emotiva mono blocks and their differential reference DR2s. Uh, the only thing that we don't have Emotiva for is for our height ceiling speakers, which we use a vintage Sony TAN 9000 ES five channel amp. Someday we'll replace that because that's it's our weakest link in our amplification. But nevertheless, it's all telling the same story. They're all feeding Polk Audio speakers uh, from their flagship ranges. Our front and side surround speakers are from the LSI series from 20 years ago. So they've been out there for a while. Then we have in the rear our Polk LSI M speakers. And for the ceiling, we'd also have that same radial ring tweeter, which we find in all of the LSI and LSI M series. Now, eventually I want to get uh, updated our front uh, speakers because we do feel like uh, they do could, could use some refreshing, maybe relegate the front speakers that we have today to front wides. And so that's kind of the current plan. But uh, that's the test setup. And we use an ABC uh, switcher from Duke Audio. And this lets us switch instantly between uh, one processor to another to another and compare side by side with the same source material. And we're using an HDMI splitter. So we're coming off the same UHD player from Sony, the uh, same Apple TV. Uh, and those are being split out to all three units. So we're getting the same source with the same content at the same time. And that ABC switcher lets us hear the differences a little more easily because our, um, our audio memory is short. And uh, so this is the only way I find that you can really get down to a comparison. Now, what we've done, and we've continued this on with the other tests that we did, and we've plotted these on the same chart as everything else that we've brought in the past. So we brought in, for example, the uh, Denon product, the Marantz products, the Onkyo products, uh, Anthem, and uh, Yamaha. And let's see how these fit in. 
uh, against those. Now, we already had the Emotiva plotted, and that fell in our top tier of products with the Yamaha, with the Anthem. Where do these fit? Well, what we found is they fit in the same tier, the Monoprice HTP1 and the Arkham AV41. And we plot these uh, on two axes. One is about really how wide the sound stage is, whether it feels confined or feels more spacious. And then on the other axis, uh, whether we felt that the content sounded thin or rich. And the more spacious, the more rich, the more enjoyable, I believe, the processor or receiver uh, is, uh, and, and that gets our highest rating. But we found that these units to date have largely fell into three groups, a lower tier, a mid tier, and an upper tier. So as I say, the Monoprice HTP1 and the Arkham AV40 both fit in that top tier. Now in this top tier, they're all AV processors, except for one, the Yamaha RX-A8A. And I believe the A6A would also fit in this, but we haven't brought it in house. Now you can look at the plot and see that I've marked some a little higher than others. So right now the Yamaha is really holding that top spot, followed by Emotiva, then Monoprice, then Arcam and Anthem. But I tell you, this may get down to that real subjective um, feeling. Uh, I come back at different days with different content, and I do arrive at the same conclusion, so I'm at least consistent in the way I feel about this. But you may feel differently. So I think it's better to look at it as these are all top tier products. If good sound quality is one of your main criteria, I think any of these would suit the need for good sound quality and not to worry whether you're splitting hairs with the Yamaha being a little better than the Anthem or the Arcam, et cetera, but just feel that they're all in the same tier. Now, if you drop down a tier, this is where you find products like the Marantz Cinema 40 and the Denon AVR X4800, which we felt were a little better than the next tier down in those brands. Uh, clearly discernible um, between them. And I could clearly find a difference between the Marantz Cinema 40 and the ones in this upper tier, for example. Now, the Onkyo TXRZ50 also fit into this mid-tier, in which it makes it one of the most um, value-oriented receivers out there. A little bit lower than the Denon Marantz at that tier, but still doing quite well for its price. Now, on the lowest tier, where we have the Cinema 50 from Marantz and the Denon AVR-X3800, now what we found here is the application of Direct with them adding direct to these units, it does improve these products. So through room calibration, you can have it move up into the right. And that's what happened, but not enough to move it into the second tier of products. So you squeeze out a little more juice to make it a little better with the room calibration. But from my assessment, you can't get it to move up to the next tier. So I think looking at it from these three tiers is probably a good way to look at it. Of course, we'll welcome your feedback on this and, and see if you agree with the assessment here. But yes, uh, all of these products that we brought in for the 16 channel, uh, these you pay a little bit more for than some of these others in this, uh, this chart, but you are getting a top tier experience. So to round off some of our comparison here, I wanted to talk about some of the things you notice right off the bat, which is how these things start up. And we did some time sync on this. Now these aren't real scientific. I hold my, my timer and I hit the, the power button and then I see when it kind of settles out and I hit the stop button. Uh, but it's not a real scientific, but it gets you in the ballpark of how long it takes these units to start up. And all of these models have a you know, a, a cold start uh, from full power down and a standby or a fast startup. And so we measured both of these and we found the Arcam to start up from a uh, cold boot at 37 seconds. The Emotiva took a, 
lot longer at 86 seconds. And the mono price, I would say that's almost a tie with the Emotiva at 90 seconds. Uh, maybe if I was more careful on it, maybe they would find about the same there. Uh, from standby, the RCAM really didn't gain anything. It was still 36 seconds versus 37. I think that's within the margin of error. On Emotiva, there was a huge difference. So where it was 86 seconds to boot from cold, and it's kind of a two-step process with a cold boot. It first gets up to speed, and then goes to a standby uh, phase, and then you have to hit the power button one more time to take it out of standby and go it into runtime mode. So uh, part of that 87, uh, 86 seconds is to hit that button and do that second phase. But 86 seconds from cold boot, 11 seconds from standby, so it's pretty quick. And then the mono price has this fast start mode, and if you configure it for that, although it after the first boot, it kind of sets that automatically, fast start to on. So unless you've manually taken it back to fast start equals off through the configuration page, you're going to get about a 12 second boot time. So almost the same as the Emotiva. So I went to plug in the amp cables into the back of each of these. Some were a little easier to manage than others. Now I kind of like the nice um, all-in-a-row layout of both Mono Price and Emotiva. And I also found their labeling to be easier to read than that of RCAM, uh, where Mono Price was the easiest. And you can see a little bit from these pictures. I didn't get a nice square shot on the RMC because this is in that rack and it was hard to get a camera behind there. But the RCAM. Not only is the font kind of this very thin side, but the lettering is gray. In fact, I think it's a little clearer in this picture than with my own eyes. Every time I have to plug something into the RCAM, I have to use a flashlight or I cannot read the back of this. The other ones, I can put the cables in with confidence even without a flashlight because those either bright um, white letters on black background or the inverse, and it's very easy to see on either with, of course, the monolith being the best. Another difference that we noticed is on uh, parametric equalization. RCAM, I couldn't find any capability uh, for PEQ in the RCAM. Monoprice and Emotiva both have facilities. Now the Monoprice webpage was a nicer way to import the, the PEQ settings uh, to see that. Um, Emotiva, uh, is a little, you know, a little clunkier of an interface to, to put it in. You, there's no web interface, so you've got to put it in that uh, that uh, on-screen method and a one frequency at a time. But they do allow you to import filters where Monoprice doesn't. So even though the interface isn't quite as elegant as Monoprice, the import capability uh, was something that made a big difference on the Emotiva side. And so while I'm doing the experiments with uh, Joe and Tell's Magic Beans, that creates the, um, the filters that you need. Um, with the Emotiva, I can just import it with the mono price. I think I just have to manually enter it in. I'll talk to Joe to see if he knows a clever way, but I think we're limited to manual entry at this time on mono price and, and no such facility on our cam. Uh, again, I'll talk to him, maybe he knows something. Way to go and set up these. Now, as we said, Emotiva only has an on-screen display. Monoprice and RCAM both have web configurations. But Monoprice really gets the award for having the nicest uh, web UI out there. And of course, would beat the on-screen display of Emotiva as well. Uh, I love the icons that they put on there. It kind of mimics their front display, but then goes a layer deeper versus the RCAM uh, is just kind of straightforward raw uh, uh, fields in there and uh, really not a lot of extra thought on that interface. On the front panels, Monoprice once again gives a lot of nice information with those icons in there to know what the source format is, what your resulting format, I found that to be the easiest to read and understand what I'm receiving and what I'm ultimately decoding as and what those channels I should be expecting coming out of it. Now, RCAM, a nice clear display, 
but it's really, I think, just showing either the source, the output, but I don't get both. And it was confusing at times as to the speaker count. So uh, I wasn't pleased on how the information was presented on the RCAM. Now, Emotiva provides a lot of detail. And of course, this is configurable on the Emotiva. Uh, this is the most detailed view, which is showing the, the source and the results. Uh, not as elegant as the mono price, but the information is still all there. Now, RCAM is the only one that has a mobile application, but I had problems. If I downloaded the one that's labeled RCAM, and this is for the iPhone, I didn't try it for the uh, Android devices, but for, for iPhone, the RCAM app just didn't work. Uh, so what I ended up doing is looking at the um, Music Life app that Harman makes and downloading that and using that one. And I did was successful and I brought it into an iPad, but I was disappointed from the fact that really it was a duplicate. It wasn't much more than what you would get on a remote control. So here I'm showing the remote control side by side. And uh, other than the fact that you've got some of the source information, which shows up on the front panel here. So, because your, your AV processor might be in the back room or too far to see, at least that brings it closer to you if you have an iPad or an iPhone in front of you. But um, I'm not getting much more functionality. Now they do have some streaming support through this. And so you do have that benefit, but as far as giving more access to functions, not very good. And if you hit the setup button through this, it just takes you to that same configuration web page. Uh, that we would we're running all along here. So uh, nothing really special on this mobile app. It's just an app-based remote control. Now at this point, I want to dive a little bit more into the surround formats and how each of these processors handle them. Now, as we showed before, there are two products, uh, the AV41 and the HTP1 that support Oral 3D. The Emotiva is only supporting DTSX and Dolby Atmos, which the others support, but it doesn't have the Oral 3D capability. Now, uh, Emotiva is the only one that advertises uh, DSD or Super Audio CD uh, capability, but we did find that these other products are able to take those sources. So let's learn what we, uh, came up with, with those cases as well. At this point, let's see how each of these models is handling different source material. We start with compact disc, which is a pulse code modulation signal, two channels coming in. And one thing I'll point out right away is the um, RCAM and the mono price don't have a pure direct mode, but they do have, let's say, a native uh, decoding mode. The way RCAM handles this, you can cycle through the surround modes until you get one that appears to be the native source format. The direct button doesn't uh, work because that's uh, reserved for only analog signals with RCAM. So direct can't be used with digital on the RCAM. On the mono price, it does have a direct button and they have a native button. So uh, either one of them gets it down to the uh, original source uh, content. Now with Emotiva, we both have a um, direct and they also have a reference stereo mode. So there's some differences on these kind of pure type modes, which each can handle. So what RCAM does is take that 2.0 signal and it becomes 2.1. We just get our front subwoofer working, but with mono price, we get both subwoofers going and same with Emotiva with the direct mode. Now, if we go to pure direct mode with Emotiva, we just get the front speakers uh, and we can only do pure direct uh, on the, the RMC1 when the speakers are set to large. Now you can upmix a compact disc with all of these. And uh, this will work for um, a the Dolby Surround Up Mixer, the Neural X Up Mixer for all these models, and they all give you a 7.2.4 output.
the models that support Oral 3D, the RCAM and the mono price, will also let you up mix to 7.2.4. So what we would expect there, because Emotiva does not support Oral 3D. Now, none of these have special DSP modes and surround um, AI like the Yamaha uh, did. So you will see all those columns just black in this presentation because those were a little more unique to Yamaha. Maybe we'll see some other brands that also have such DSP modes, but uh, not this collection. Now, a two-channel DSD Super Audio CD. Now, uh, for these, what we found was RCAM, even though they don't advertise DSD support, neither does mono price, they were able to take in that signal. And in fact, the display showed that it's receiving a DSD signal. And it interpreted that as 2.0.0 in the DSD surround mode. Now, I did notice some weirdness happening uh, when uh, switching the inputs. Sometimes it wasn't able to get the DSD mode back again, and it was showing PCM instead uh, on that. And, and uh, so I'm not quite sure what's going on with that, if it's doing something different internally or just displaying it differently, but that was an artifact. Now, mono price. Uh, was able to also take in the Super Audio CD. Uh, it interpreted it as 2.2 with no heights. Uh, so you got your subwoofers where you didn't get those on the RCAM, but it did never recognize it as DSD. There's nothing that comes up on the screen that says DSD. It would always say PCM as the source. The RMC one will actually say DSD as the source. And as I understand it, the Emotiva is the only one that really natively keeps the DSD signal through the whole process before converting it to analog. But as a result, they're not able to do any upmixing. Whereas the RCAM and the mono price is able to upmix using Dolby Surround, Neural X, or Oral 3D. Now with the RCAM, that upmixing is a little limited. Under Dolby Surround, it's only 2.2.4. And under Neural X, it's 2.0.0. But when you get to Oral 3D, you get a 6.2.4 signal. So they're not simulating any center channel. With mono price with the upmixing, we actually get the center channel and we get it for a Dolby Surround, Neural X, and Oral 3D, all as 7.2.4. Then we looked at a super audio disc that was 5.1. So this was like the dark side of the moon uh, album. And all of them interpreted the five channels uh, with the subwoofer, uh, except for Emotiva, I got zero on the subwoofer. I, I just got the five uh, channels. I, I might want to rerun that again to see if it was just a setting because I find that odd because there, the dot one is in the source material. The Emotiva is not able to upmix, but the others are, and they all give you a 7.2.4 uh, upmixing capability. So this was a little more consistent than the two-channel source. With a quadraphonic source, uh, with a DTS HD master audio um, encoding on a quad uh, disc, uh, we were able to see that as a 4.2 on the RCAM and the mono price in kind of that native uh, decoding. And then they were able to upmix it to 6.2.4. And then on the RMC1, it was also 4.2 in the direct mode, but only 2.0 in the reference stereo mode. But it was able to do a neural X upmix on this source to 6.2. Now, looking at some movie content with Dolby Digital Plus, a 5.1 source. So uh, RCAM and Mono Price and Emotiva, all in their kind of native mode, would give you it as 5.2, so it will bring in that second subwoofer. Uh, the reference stereo, again, down mixes to two channel. The uh, up mixing is capable, so they all give you a 7.2.4 up mix for Atmos, DTSX, or Neural X, and Oral 3D. Now, Emotiva, uh, this being a 
Dolby source is not applying the normal X. Uh, you're not able to select normal X as an up mixer, only the uh, one that matches the source material. For DTS uh, 5.1 uh, source material, uh, RCAM and mono price, even in their native modes, would give you the surround back channels. So they would up mix the surround back and also use both subwoofers. RCAM as a DTS uh, will not uh, up mix uh, to Dolby Surround with the Dolby Surround decoder, but we'll do it for Neural X and Oral 3D versus Mono Price will let you actually up mix using Dolby Surround. And of course, the RMC1 always stays consistent with the source and will only let you use the Neural X up mixer with a DTS HD MA source. For Digital Dolby Plus with a 7.1 uh, content, uh, you get the extra subwoofer. So all three of these give you a 7.2.0 for the native decoding. And the up mixing brings in those immersive channels for a 7.2.4. Uh, and for all up mixers, except again, the RMC1 is limited to Dolby Surround, which matches the source. For a DTS HDMA 7.1 source, they're giving you a, a 7.2 signal for the native, uh, giving you both subwoofers with that. And then for the up mixing capabilities, now RCAM is not letting you use the Atmos or Dolby Surround up mixer with that source, but does give you the Neural X and the Oral 3D. Mono price does allow all three types of up mixers. And the RMC1, once again, is limited to DTS-X on the up mixing. Moving up to immersive content, Dolby Atmos, a 7.1.4 source, was able to, in a, on a direct native mode, uh, give you 7.2.4. So what we expect, just adding that other subwoofer, and then uh, the decoders, uh, we would only work with a Dolby surround up mixer. So you couldn't set it to Neural X on any of these. But the exception is on the RCAM, you could actually use the Oral 3D decoder, but you couldn't use that with the mono price. Now with DTS-X source, uh, very similar, 7.1.4, again, you get your extra subwoofer, 7.2.4 in the most native reproduction. And then when using the up mixers, uh, the Dolby Surround 7.2.4 and all the other ones, uh, all 7.2.4. And then for the up mixing, they all gave you Neural X with 7.2.4 with RCAM also allowing Dolby Surround up mixing or Oral 3D up mixing all to 7.2.4. Now, when it comes to Oral 3D content, there's not a lot out of there and we've done other videos on this, then there's different formats, 9.1, 10.1, et cetera. Uh, what we were able to find is a audio Blu-ray that has oral 9.1 content. That's a pure audio disc. And when you run it as a direct mode, it's really interpreting the as DTSX. So oral 3D runs on top of DTSX, and that's why it's doing that. And so when it sees that, our cam is interpreting it as a 5.2 with nothing coming out to the rear surrounds. And the same case with the Emotiva, it's 5.2. But with the mono price, it's filling in those rear surrounds in the native uh, mode. So you get 7.2. Now they all take the DTS X Neural X up mixer. But RCAM gives you that as a 7.2.0 with no immersive channels going. You have to go to Oral 3D on that one to get the 7.2.4. With mono price, all the up mixers work and they all gave you 7.2.4. And with Emotiva, uh, it came out as Neural X uh, is 7.2.0. Now this all makes sense because the Emotiva doesn't support Oral 3D. So it's reading that DTS uh, format and using the Neural X and doing the best it can. At this point, let me give you my summary that's really sums up this whole month where we've 
had in the monoprice, the Arcan, and blended it with our Emotiva. And looking at different categories on each of these, what did we find? The user experience, I'll give that to monoprice. The icons on the display or on the web page, excellent. It shows you the source, shows the output, very easy to follow. And you can customize their web UI and put in the things that you want to use. Really nice. Uh, the worst one out there was the Arcan. Uh, we're only seeing the output only on the front display. The on-screen display is only basic. The web UI needs a lot of work. And yeah, there's a mobile app, but it's really just a remote control. And it's used for streaming services. And I used my Apple TV for the streaming services, so why do I need it in a mobile app that's going to uh, Bluetooth it over? Uh, to, to the unit. Uh, and then the Emotiva, you know, you, it gets the job done. It's a no frills interface. It's only on screen. There's no web UI. So it's kind of in the in between on the user experience uh, on, on the Emotiva. Now, when it comes down to the different remotes, uh, you did have a backlight on the Arcam one. That I think was the most redeeming characteristic of the Arcam remote. I, I didn't really care for it. I think the user experience needs work on it. The Monoprice, while it didn't have a backlight, I thought the navigation was really good and it has some really unique features of uh, navigating easily to a DTSX or Atmos or a uh, Oral 3D uh, decoder or hitting that direct button or the native button on it. So that, that really made the experience good. Now, the Emotiva remote doesn't have that, but I have the trim buttons that the other two don't. So you got a mixed bag there on the remotes. Each of them have a feature I wish were all in, in one remote. But uh, so each has a good thing and each has some bad things. On DSD support, now, well, Arcam and Monoprice both say they don't support it or they don't have any documentation that describes their DSD support, they were able to take the signal in. Now, what I think is happening is it's converting it to PCM when it receives it, and then does all the conversion from there, from digital to analog after that. But because of that, you're able to do up mixing, whereas the Emotiva is more native and you're not able to do the up mixing. Now, from an immersive point of view, it's nice to have the up mixing capability, but I did find that the native direct format that you get through the Emotiva, it, it sounded better with, with the Emotiva because it wasn't going through all this extra conversion. But it was a very subtle point. So uh, I wouldn't hold the phone on that and, and you might just as well pick the others because they like the up mixing, but for the DSD purists, go with the Emotiva. For oral 3D support, I think the best implementation is Arcan because it gives you the um, height center and the top center speakers, which you can't configure in the mono price. And of course, Emotiva doesn't support it at all. Uh, but you need kind of native content to make use of that, uh, that, that top center and the height center. Otherwise, what Monoprice has done, where you can take the middle center speakers, which left and right, and kind of phantom image uh, may give you kind of the best of both worlds. But if you're an oral 3D fanatic, I would go with the Arcam for that. Now, they all had some issues, but the one that had the least amount of issues was the Monoprice. A little quirks here and there, but there was no hum. There was no pops. Everything was clean and worked really well. And I understand they had some reboot issues in the past. Uh, I don't have anything like that on this unit that I received. And I hope the rest of you are getting out of the woods if you had that problem. But on the Arcam, the, the, the humming that's coming through with the mute and the standby. Now, I understand that's probably unique to me. Uh, a lot of you are writing in that you have this and you don't have those problems. Wonderful. Uh, but I have to report it. That's what I'm seeing. Uh, but I am getting these pops during the startup. If I have my amplifiers on and this thing's starting up, 
you hear these pops and crackles or I'm changing the inputs. So it's not clean. Now I hear something similar on the RMC1, but not as bad as on the RCAM. There are some functional quirks in the RCAM. You know, the layouts, what I don't like is you have to do channels 13 and 14 and 15 and 16 in pairs. So if you only need to do one, it's going to mess up your Dirac calibration because the Dirac's now good ex expecting two subwoofers there and not just one. So there's some combination of things and you go back to our prior video, we explain all that uh, in there, but this is a summary. And then on the Emotiva, as I said, you get those pops and crackles every so often when you're changing inputs. Uh, and there are some quirks in the Emotiva, but not, I think, as bad as what you get on the RCAM. A little more thought through there. As far as Dirac support, Dirac Live support, it's included with all of them. But only the RCAM and only the mono price are going to give you the base control option. Now you're going to pay $350 for single subwoofer and $500 for multi subwoofer, this add on. Now I didn't pay that money because these are going back and I would lose that investment. The mono price is the best is when it comes to filters because it supports six. This is the first product we've experienced that allow for six Dirac filters and you can switch on the fly while you're using the web UI, which is awesome. The RCAM and the Emotiva only have three. Not bad, but six is better. The new Dirac Art um, that's coming, that we've only heard from Monoprice as they said that should be ready in October. There was some embargo because Storm has had an exclusive with Dirac's acoustic room treatment art uh, system. And this runs out, I believe, in October. And this is when Monoprice said that they'll introduce it. We'll see, right? But it's nice that they're committing to it. We haven't heard from Emotiva or Arcam if they are going that route. Now I would expect maybe Arcam would get it before Emotiva. And you may have to wait, I think, to the plus version of the RMC1. Uh, I would be my, my best bet. The other issue is with the Emotiva, you have a little external box, a little four port switch and uh, a little converter box because the implementation of their hardware didn't quite support it right. And they needed that to roll it out. But uh, that's something once you get it set up, you fit and forget, right? So you don't have to worry about it. Now there's a, a unique features in some of these. With RCAM, as we said, um, the best oral 3D implementation, you can do the full 13.1 speaker layout with the uh, center height and top center speakers. So that's good there. Uh, Emotiva has balanced inputs where these others don't. The Monoprice has a AES EBU port. It doesn't have the standard um, balanced inputs uh, that we normally see on consumer grade uh, uh, hi-fi equipment. So the, the, the other AES, AES EBU is really more for professionals. But the mono price has a few other things. It has the BEQ support where you can import your filters. And this is where you wouldn't have to manually uh, enter it. I understand. I haven't tried it out. You got a 16 band PEQ in it. You have not just a loudness feature that Emotiva has, but the ability to adjust it. And you, you choose the level in which you want to apply your loudness effect. They also have this wide synth. So uh, if your content doesn't have wide speakers in it, um, even uh, formats that don't support it, like Oral 3D, it will add the wide speakers. So if you have wide speakers, the mono price might be for you. And it supports center spread option on the mono price. So that's uh, good to see there. So what is our conclusion? There's more positives against the mono price HTP one. And this will give us our top rating of this group. And the price isn't bad at $4,000. It's design is well thought through. It has a lot of unique features. So it gets our top award here. Uh, coming in second place is the RMC one. Uh, yes, it had the best sound quality slightly, uh, but you know, it needs a few more features like oral 3d, 
uh, and it could benefit from a web UI. And RCAM coming in third here, the most expensive unit. Our expectations are higher. Yes, it's feature rich. It has good sound. It, it can compete at the same level, but at this price, shouldn't it be better? And with these usability issues, and with, let's say those sound issues that I'm hearing aren't really present, uh, the usability issues uh, are something that they need to address. So this gets a third place. Uh, but what I ask you to do is take a look at a chart like this and focus in on what's important to you. So if oral 3D is really important to you, maybe you are getting the ARCAM. If, um, you know, having base control, uh, it's either the ARCAM or the mono price uh, do that. You know, if DSD is really your bag, then RMC1. So these aren't cut and dry answers, but if I look at it holistically, I got to give the award to the mono price HTP1. So this is kind of our conclusion. What is your thoughts? Are you interested in any of these? How would you have ranked these? What features are important to you? What do you think these are still missing? That feedback would be real useful to the RipeWave audio community. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to take your involvement to the next level, visit our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash RipeWave. And if you want to give us a one-time donation, you can hit that thanks button there and put in whatever you feel is uh, appropriate. You can always hit that bell notification so you're notified when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.